Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Transformation TV, where we transform lives through the Word of God. Now, tonight is Wednesday night, so you know what that means. It's time for our weekly Bible studies, or rather, conversations. Our Bible studies have transitioned into conversations, and we're going to stay right in that vein on tonight. If you have not joined us before, you may not be aware that we are in the middle of the Transformation Series. The Transformation Series was derived from my book, From Stagnation to Transformation. If you're not aware of my book, please visit www.cliftonpettyjohn.com forward slash transformation. There you're going to find reviews that have been written. You're going to find information about the book as well as a free complimentary or a complimentary preview of my book as my gift to you. So I encourage you to go read the uh, preview and eventually invest in your purpose or find yourself investing in someone, someone else's purpose by purchasing a copy. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. You alone are worthy. You alone are awesome. Absolutely none that can compare unto you. Now, tonight I'm asking that you will transform our lives through this teaching. I'm asking now that you will take the coals from upon the altar, burn my lips, purify my heart, my mind, and my spirit, that I will speak, God, your words with power, authority, and conviction that I will only speak what you desire for me to speak, God. I pray now, God, that it will be prophetic, laced with apostolic authority, Lord. I'm asking now, God, that it will not just penetrate the hearts and minds of individuals, God, but it will penetrate the spirit, God. I pray that now in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that lives, as I said, will be transformed. God, that people will be drawn closer to you, that our relationships will be established with you, God, and revelation will be brought unto their life. I pray that now for healing and deliverance as well, God. We praise you for it. We magnify you for it. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, we pray. And we say amen. Enjoy the teaching. The unwrapping of purpose. The unwrapping of purpose. That is tonight's topic. That's what we're going to navigate through on tonight. And while we're talking about the unwrapping of purpose, I want you to think about purpose as a gift, as a gift. Have you ever, <laughs> have you ever been celebrating your birthday or celebrating uh, those who celebrate Christmas or whatever you celebrate? Uh, have you ever been uh, excited about it and excited about a present because you were getting a present from someone that you felt knew you and it came and the presentation of it was pretty and you unwrapped it and you were like, what? You got me this? Now, I know some of you can say, you ought to be grateful you got a gift. But sometimes we have expectations for people, especially those who are connected to us and we feel should know us. Have you ever experienced that? Where you thought that you were going to get it, even though you may have played like you didn't think you were going to get that gift that you wanted, that gift you kept mentioning to them, that gift you kept hinting around to them, that gift that kept coming on TV, on the commercial, and every time it came on the commercial, you would pause it and then push play again, rewind it, push play again so they would catch the hint, and they just seemed not to catch the hint. Have you ever experienced that? Sometimes that's how it feels when we're unwrapping purpose. Because sometimes we may receive a prophetic word or somebody might tell us how great and how awesome what we've been called to do. Or we may even ourselves hear it for ourselves and, and make plans for ourselves on how beautiful our purpose is. But what we don't understand that sometimes purpose sometimes doesn't come wrapped in a pretty box. And if you're looking for something that's wrapped in a pretty box, that may be the reason why you missed your purpose. Or your purpose may come wrapped in a pretty box, but when you unwrap it and start to pull some of the things out, you start to pull out hurt, you start to pull out anger, you start to pull out resentment, you start to pull out bitterness, you start to pull out rage, you start to pull out everything that seems to contradict what the prophetic word said or what you, your idea of what your purpose should be or the stage of the purpose that you should be in. Have you ever experienced that? I mean, I'm gonna pause here to give you time just to think about it. I think we all have experienced that sometimes. I don't think we all understood everything 
that is connected to our purpose. And one of the things that I that I aim to do is to always be transparent about my process because I feel like if I'm transparent about my process and I can raise other, a generation of transparent transformers, then people will begin to have a more realistic approach towards purpose and won't be so ready to quit so quick or uh, be ready to quit so quickly. Sometimes we're ready to quit because we didn't count the cost. We didn't understand the cost that was associated with it. Why? Because we didn't pay pay attention to the cost that was associated with it. Or we thought we would be the only exception to that cost. The process. The process. It's not always pretty. It's not always pretty. It's not glamorous. And sometimes we think some of the things that we are called and created to do are glamorous. We look at some athletes. We may even look at our favorite rapper, our favorite singer, or whoever it is, our favorite actor or actress. But we don't take into account the years of preparation, the, the sacrifice and dedication that it took in order for them to accomplish the goals that they had set that were connected to their purpose. My question to each and every one of us, how willing are you to sell out to the process in order to make the progress that's connected to your purpose? Think about it. Be honest about it. Because can I be honest? I haven't always been willing, and can, let's be real, I'm not always willing to sell out to the process that's going to birth the purpose. And that's why sometimes God has to reroute me and reroute me sometimes, you know. And I don't want you to have to go through some of those reroutings that I went through. That's why I'm very, as I said, transparent about my story. Let's keep going. All right. Why do you struggle with the concept of purpose? Why do you struggle with believing that you were created with purpose in mind? I want you to think about it. I want you to think of the root of that struggle that you have. Why do you struggle with it so much? Sorry, y'all. I think my lips was getting dry. There we go. Why do you struggle so much with that concept? I want you to think about that. What are some unanswered questions that if answered, you would be more open to purpose as it relates to your personal life? Some of us struggle with purpose because it requires us to, to experience the unknown. Purpose doesn't allow us to be in control. And some of us, can I talk about me? I'm going to put both my hands up. If I could put my feet up too, I would put my feet up too because I struggle with that because sometimes I like to be in control. Even, excuse me, even though time has proven to me that when I'm in control, I don't always have my best interests at hand. Why? Because sometimes I go into self preservation mode. And when you go into self-preservation mode, self-preservation mode is an enemy to your purpose. For those of us struggling with control, understand self-preservation mode is an enemy to your purpose. So that may be why, you know, we're not progressing at the rate that we could be progressing at, but guess what? It's okay. It is okay. We can all, God will always reroute us. And that's what tonight's message is designed to do for any of us that may be struggling with the concept of purpose or struggling, sitting, looking at the box or looking at our purpose and what we were created to do. And we just don't want to touch it because we know that if we touch it, there are some things that we have to deal with that we don't want to deal with. Let's keep going. My personal greatest struggle what the concept of purpose is the unknown. That's what I was just talking about. The unknown. I don't like surprises. I do not like surprises because surprises make me feel as if I can't control those moments. I can't control my emotions. I can't control my responses. I can't control all of those things. I'm a processor. And if you surprise me, it catches me off guard and I may not be able to process it as quickly as I need to process it in order to make sure that my emotions are in check. But you know what all that tied to? It tied to my need to be God. <laughs> it tied to my need to be God. Now, some of you might say, wait a minute, prophet, what you mean by your, it tied to your needs to be God? We're not God. Calm down. <laughs> Calm down. 
I'm speaking of my need to be in control and orchestrating the entire thing. Jeremiah 29 and 11, probably the only scripture we're going to go to tonight, but I guarantee you, if you listen, we are tied all into the word, all right? I'll read it from the voice translation. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, saith the eternal, plans for peace, not evil, to give you a, give you a future and hope. Never forget that. Uh, the way the uh, Wycliffe Bible says, for I know the thoughts which I think on you, saith the Lord, the thoughts of peace and not of torment that I give to you an end and patience. Now, I like this version because version because it said I give you an end and patience. Y'all know we don't want to have no patience. <laughs> we want the end but we don't want to have the patience involved with getting to the end. All right. I'm just, come on. Am I, am I right? Am I right? Talk to me. If I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. I know I'm not wrong that we don't want to have that patience to get there. We want to know it. One translation says, God said, I alone know the thoughts. And that's why I said, I want it to be God because I want God, I wanted God to tell me play by play, what is going to happen? What is the next step? What is the next step? What is the next step? But the reality with the creator, he's not going to give you step by step, play by play. If you're still standing still, sometimes you're not going to get the next instruction until you're on your way fulfilling the first instruction. And then it might come in the middle of the first instruction, or it might come at the end of the first instruction. If you've experienced that, raise your hand for me. Just let me know that, yes, you've experienced that. Have you? I also wasn't very aggressive as it came to my purpose. Now, understand, when I'm talking about aggressive, I'm talking about I was a person that just sat back and whatever happened, it happened. Versus being a person that went out and made some moves and made some things happen. And some of you, you taking that scripture, they that wait. God, I'm just sitting around waiting on you. I will wait upon the Lord. And we know those of you that have been a part of this, God gave me an acronym for wait. Those who work, anticipate, ignore, and trust. That's what it was. Wait, anticipate, ignore, and trust. Go back and listen to that part of this series to get the whole concept behind that. But that waiting talks about us progressively doing what we need to be doing, follow the instructions, following the instructions of what we've already received. Someone said, I don't know what I should be doing. Do what you do know. Do what you do know. There's a portion of everything that we know. The reality is sometimes, sometimes the portion of what we know is the part that we don't want to do. That preparation stage, sometimes that pre pre that, pre 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 that, that preparation stage to us sucks. Reality is it sucks because we just want to get to the finished product. Get me to the fin finished product, God. Get me to that expected end that you promised me. And he's saying, I can't get you there because I got to process you now. Because if I don't process, process you, you won't even be able to handle that expected end. You're not built for it yet. You're not conditioned for it yet. And that's not a negative slight against you. We have to learn how to enjoy the journey and enjoy the process. And no, it doesn't feel good. No, it doesn't look good. No, it doesn't sound good. No, it doesn't taste good. No, it doesn't feel good, but it's connected to that expected end. All right. See, I was a person that would sit back and wait instead of stepping out to create. And I encourage you today, no more sitting back to wait. We are going to step out to create, all right? Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. The problem with that concept was also it was rooted in fear. I developed a fear of being uh, of failing. I always felt like if I do it and I fail, people are going to laugh. If I do it and I fail, I'm going to be embarrassed. Do you see what it was always connected to? It was all connected to the thoughts, opinions, and actions of others. It was not connected to that which was inside of me. It was connected to things that were external. When you really connect with purpose and you're ready to make those moves, you're ready to make those purposeful moves, then you'll be connect you will begin to connect with that which is inside of you that's greater than any external influence. And to be honest with you, the opinions, they may 
may still matter to you. I'm not going to give you no magic remedy that the opinions will automatically stop mattering, but they will begin to matter less and less and less and less. And before you know it, you're making moves and the opinions begin to not matter. Even those that you find yourself stuck to their opinions. Can I talk about me? I struggled with bringing the Transformation Center to Delaware. The reason why I struggle with bringing the transformation to Delaware is because of the majority of my failures I experienced in Delaware. The majority of the criticism I experienced in Delaware. When me and my former partner began a ministry in Delaware, we began to be, we were the talk of town. There were pastors that were meeting just because we had started the ministry that we had started, the inclusive type of ministry we had started. I didn't want the headache of that this time. So I figured I could go to Trenton. Now, Trenton became a comfort zone for me. It really did. It became a comfort zone for me. And it's crazy because people the inner city was a comfort zone for you. It was, and I, it still is at times. I love it. I love the people there. I love doing the work there. But the reality is my purpose is connected to Delaware and Trenton right now. He's giving me other places, but we're going to focus on them two right now until he say next. And if I'm not fulfilling the full extent of what he's called me to do, then I'm still operating in the fear and thoughts of others' opinions and he can't fully get the glory out of my life. Why? Because he's trying to open doors and I'm still trying to hide, baby. And it's not a season for us to hide because I talked about that before. It's not that the creator, some of us, it's not that the creator is hiding us for a season. That season of being hidden is over. But the reality is we're still going into hiding. But tonight we're coming out of it. As I come out, I'm pulling you out. I'm pulling you out of hiding on tonight. All right, let's keep going. Now, that personal fear of a failure eventually turned over to fear of success because in my mind, I started to believe, well, what in the world am I going to do if this thing does succeed? I've experienced failure because now, now I'm familiar with failure, but I'm not very familiar with the success at, in the dimension that the creator is calling me to experience success in. And we're still talking about the unwrapping of purpose, baby. And as you unwrap that purpose, you'll realize that your fears may switch up. You may think you've conquered the fear, but you have not conquered the fear. All you have done is modified it, baby. You modified it, but guess what? We're coming for the modifications tonight and we're going to experience transformation in that area. Fear will not grip us. Fear will not hold us and fear will no longer be our God. All right, here we go. To this day, there are, there are yet several questions that I would love to have answered concerning my purpose. I would love for the creator to answer every question that I have, especially those questions when I'm having temper tantrums, when my emotions are in an up, uproar, when things aren't going the way that I desire for them to go. I would love for him to answer those questions. But I'm learning daily. Listen to what I'm learning daily. That the more I move with purpose, the more purpose is unwrapped and those questions are answered. No, he may not take the time to address the questions that I want answered, but when I take a step back, and begin to look at the big picture, I begin to understand he's answering questions, Cliff. He's answering questions, and you're getting closer and closer to the questions that you desire to be answered. Even if he don't answer them, will you still go? Now, here's where I had to change my perception concerning purpose, because as I said, I wanted God just to tell me everything concerning my purpose. I wanted to know step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, step six. I wanted to know it all. So I know from April to May, I'm going to be doing this. From June to July, I'm doing this. Now, as I said, we need to plan, but we need to have flexibility in our plan to allow the spirit to lead us as well. All right. Now, here's how I view purpose now. How many in elementary school, or maybe even after elementary school, you may do it as adults, you play treasure hunt. For those who may not know what treasure hunt is, it's designed for players to try to find hidden objects or places uh, by following a series of clues. That's kind of how your purpose comes, baby. That's how God operates. He'll drop 
something in your spirit that's connected to your purpose and you'll begin to understand, okay, I need to work on that and work on that and work on that. And the more you work on that, the more you perfect that, the more you excel in that, the more you study that, you absorb it, it becomes a part of your nature. Then he drops another clue and you move further in purpose and move further in purpose and move further in purpose. That right there is honestly how I view purpose now. I don't look for God to tell me everything because I know he's not. I want him to, but he's not. I understand and I look and value the little clues that he drops, those little nuggets that he drops. Why? Because God can take those little clues and birth an idea that ends up transforming a nation. God can, birth, God can take an idea birth it and transform a nation. And the problem with it is we're not allowing God to allow, we're not allowing the idea drop from God to be rooted enough in us to begin to spring forth in order to transform the nation. We want the idea to come today and then we're, boom, we're doing it right then and there. Sometimes there's some processes we got to go through and it has to be slow walk. Let's look at that word process. I'm glad I brought up process. It talks about a series of actions, which means we got to move. Remember I was talking about how I didn't want to move. Changes. Some of us don't like changes. I still don't sometimes either. I get it. Or functions bringing about a result. In order for a process to take place, it must have action, it must have change, and it must have consistent function. My question to you, are you in a process? And be honest about it. And when I say are you in a process, I mean, does your process, process have action? Does it have changes? And is it functioning? Let me get a little drink, sorry. Is it functioning? To think about it. Here's another definition of it. A series of operations performed in the making or treatment of a product. Another thing with your purpose. You have to begin to see yourself even as a product. In the series of operations that's going on in you. With, with the different things that are going on in your life. Or those things are causing operation to go on in you. Which is causing you to be made and treating you in a manner so that they can produce the product that's conducive to that which is needed, if that makes sense. Did that make sense? I might have confused you there. You got to go through the process in order to perform the operation that needs to be performed for those that need you. You can't, be pro you can't go partially through the process and be fully effective. You can't do that. All right? You got to continuously submit to the process. Even while you're being used, you still have to submit to the process. Let's look at the word process. Process. I like this. To put through the steps of a prescribed procedure. The steps that you're going through, because you might say, Cliff, I've been in this process forever. But is it the pres prescribed procedure? Or did you prescribe your own procedure? Y'all know how sometimes uh, the more you learn how to cook or you learn how to bake, you may adjust the recipe a little bit or a lot in order to make it to the please your pleasing or the way that it tastes good to you. You can't do purpose like that. You can't take out a little bit of hurt, a little bit of anger, a little bit of frustration and think, boom, I'm going to show up. I'm ready. It doesn't work like that. You got to be rooted in it the way that it was prescribed for you, all right? To prepare, treat, or convert by subjecting to a special process. And I put down here, I was talking about different companies. Apple's not going to produce a product or release a product until it's passed all the tests it needs to pass in order for it to be, uh, in order for it to gain the, um, I guess, in order, uh, hear what I say, in order for it to be worthy of that symbol being put on it. Now, granted, I want to say something here. The creator uses us. I'm telling you, he uses us awesomely in all of our imperfections. But there come seasons and times in our lives, in our growth, in our development, as he's taken us through realms and dimensions where he requires more from us. 
I don't want you to think that I'm beating you up or I don't want you to think that I'm coming at you saying you're not worthy. Understand what I'm saying. You have to go through a process. We all have to go through a process. We all have to begin to deal with some of the things in our life that just don't look like him. Don't look like him. Don't smell like him. Don't taste like him. Don't walk like him. Don't talk like him. We all have to go through a process. Why? that when he puts us on those stages or in those dimensions with the next level, that we're able to handle the pressure that comes with it as well. Because it's not just the glamour that comes. There's a pressure. There's a temptation assigned to it. There's a lie assigned to it. There's some truth from your past assigned to it. He has to make sure that we are prepared to handle each and every one of those situations in the dimension that he has called us to. All right, here we go. To gain an understanding of or acceptance of, to come to terms with. Have you came to terms with it? Have you been processed enough to come to terms with some of the things that frustrate you or make you mad about your purpose? Because everything about my purpose, I don't like. But I've had to come to terms with some of those things to realize, okay, in order for me to be the vessel that he desires for me to be, this has to be this way. Have you come to terms with him? Be honest. If you have it, it's still some things I'm still coming to terms with. That's the reality of it. All right? Prepared or converted by a special process. Have you went through that special process? The Latin root of that word uh, process means um, to advance. And many of you, it's time for you to advance beyond where you are right now. But the first advancement the first advancement is not a public advancement. It's a private advancement. And that's the pro that's the uh, struggle sometimes with us is that we advance privately, but we want to announce it publicly. That sometimes it's just not time for it to be announced, baby. But your time is coming. It's coming. You know, whenever I talk about this section, I'm always taken back to 2010, which represented a time in my life where I felt so detached from God, people, and ultimately my purpose. I was nothing more than a program robot, robot or rather a machine. Or for some of you sci-fi fans, I felt like I was a zombie, walking around dead, the walking dead. I had no emotional attachment to anything or anyone. I was daily going through the motions, yet feeling lost, empty, and ineffective. Even though people were saying they were being blessed, God was still gracious. He was blessing people through me. I still felt that emptiness, that disconnect, and I just felt like, oh, oh man, I thank God where I am now. I still have a lot of work to do. Understand what I'm saying? I still have a lot of work to do. But as I think back on that time, man, I felt so worthless, so useless, and I just felt like, why am I even here? I felt my efforts were pointless. They lacked meaning and depth. I felt like I lacked meaning in death, depth. Um, and, you know, now I realize that my life was not over, but it was just beginning. You know, I had spent my entire life doing everything that everybody wanted me to do and making sure that everybody else was happy. And I said, not saying I always got it right, but that was the whole basis of my life. I did what everybody else wanted me to do. All right, I encourage you never to yield the totality of your happiness and well-being to the thoughts, behavior, actions, and praises of others. Don't you dare do it. I'm telling you now, don't do it. Be there for people as much as you can, but don't let your being there for people sacrifice your sanity and your health. You hear me? <laughs> I sound like my little cousin. My little cousin, when she wants to get her point across, she said, Kiff, you hear me? You hear me, Kev? I'm asking you tonight, do you hear me? Your health in all core areas of your life, your emotional health, your spiritual health, your physical health, your psychological health, your social health must take precedence, precedence in your life. It must, it must, it must, it must. Now you might say, Cliff, I struggle with this because this seems selfish. You will not be the asset that the creator has called you, called you to be until you allow yourself to be healthy. And sometimes in order to be healthy, you have to break away. Even Yeshua, 
There were times where he had to go away from everybody in order to, to keep this, that connection straight so that this connection could always be straight. And some of us were so focused here that we're missing out on this. And I encourage you to get back centered, get back aligned with who you are. Find out who you are because some of you are going to find out you don't even know who you are. I tell the testimony all the time after my divorce, I didn't know me. I didn't know what I liked. I didn't know my dislikes. I was making crazy decisions. I mean, it was just a crazy time in my life, but I got to know who I was. It took that extreme measure to cause me to get to know who I was. Learn to exercise the power of no. Sometimes you have to tell people no, even though it hurts you to tell them no, you have to tell them no. Why? Because every no that you're willing to tell is a yes to you and the purpose in your life. Sometimes you have to say no because you know you're emotionally drained. You know you're physically drained. You know you're spiritually drained. And you know that if you don't connect with God, if you don't connect back to your power source, then you're not going to be as effective as you need to be. you got to learn that art of saying no. It'll be freeing. It'll be rewarding. And many times it's necessary. Because you'll stop being their crutch and they won't keep connecting this way. They'll learn how to connect that way too. It'll cause them to mature and grow up and stop looking at you as a crutch. Also, my encouragement, I've said this in the, another part of the teaching, deal with the part of you that feels like you have to always help people. Sometimes that superhero syndrome is a driving spirit that's designed to wear you all the way out. You don't want to be burned out, all right? It will help you pace yourself in a manner that you do not get overloaded and eventually, as I said, burning out. I cannot express this enough. Take care of you. Take care of you because you cannot expect others to value what you won't value yourself. We, the saying is so true. We teach other people, we teach other people how to treat us. And sometimes we don't realize that but we show everybody that they're number one, we are showing them that we're last. If we show everybody that they are number one to us, we continue to show them that we take ourselves as last. Sometimes they have to see that you are going to take yourself first. Why? Because they're willing to take themselves first or put themselves first. You have to put yourself first because they're willing to put themselves first, all right? And you cannot expect God to express value through a valueless vessel. Now understand what I'm saying. I'm not calling you valueless, but if our pattern and behavior continues to cause us to pour out, never being poured back into, then there is no value there. And that's what I'm saying. God will pour into us. He will pour that value back into us, but he will not continue to keep wasting the value if we keep emptying it out without allowing him to pour back effectively inside of us. All right, God's desire for all of us is that we are whole. I talk about it. I'm big on us talking about holiness, holiness, holiness the right way. But I also point out, you can't be you can't experience holiness until you are on your pathway to a life of wholeness because holiness will require you to allow God to completely have you and live a holistic life. Mm. I'm sorry, y'all. I see the tag still on the bottom. Go ahead, talk about me. The whole that wholeness speaks of the entirety of our being. If there's an imbalance in any area of our life, the reality is we are not whole, and that does not mean we're not working on it. I encourage you to work on living a holistic life. That's the whole point of my book. That's my message. I always talk about living a holistic life. All right. Full effectiveness in your endeavors to assist others is contingent upon your personal journey to wholeness. The more whole you are, the more effective you can be in helping others. We all, y'all, anybody knows me, souls are very important to me, but I cannot go out and exasperate myself over souls and lose mine. The Bible says it would profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul. Now we know the concept is talking about, you know, going out into the world and gaining all these great things, but never taking time to work on you. Sometimes uh, being there for people becomes a drug. You, we talk about people that are out there on drugs. Sometimes our drug is helping people. 
And if you don't get balance in that, you're going to overdose on that as well. And that's going to cause you to end up going into or needing spiritual rehab. All right. You want to unwrap purpose? Do you really want to unwrap purpose? And I can tell you this by experience. Then unwrap the part of you that you keep wrapped up by helping other people. What do you mean by that, Cliff? There's a part of you that you aren't addressing and it doesn't get addressed because you spend so much time helping other people. I've been there. I use helping other people as a distraction from me focusing on what I need to help with. You want purpose? Unwrap that part of you, that uncomfortable part. That ugly part, that part that you try to run from, but every time you try to run from it, it still seems to peek out at you. It's that peekaboo, I'm still here, baby. All right? This process is far from an overnight process, guys. However, we must make the decision to no longer prolong the process. And that's what I was talking about with myself. I've been guilty of prolonging the process many a times. My encouragement to you is, Deal with that side of you that prolongs the process as well, right? It is okay to desire and pursue <laughs> to desire and pursue a fulfilling life. You need to know that. It's okay for your life to be fulfilled. You don't have to live a life where you sacrifice you for the fulfillment of others. It's okay to desire that. I want you to know that because sometimes those of us that 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 are um what is it? Um I guess, logical thinkers, um, we become extremists sometimes and we think that we are supposed to just completely deny ourselves. And my encouragement to you is learn that that's not the whole concept of it. Now, I'm not telling you to live a selfish life where you're never giving of yourself, but you need to make sure you're full enough to give of yourself. And then when you give of yourself, that you have a place that you can go back to be restored that connection, and then that you're connected with others that can help restore you as well, all right? Our lives should be fulfilling, and I need you to know that. You should be enjoying your life. There's no reason for us to be down here not enjoying our life. We should be living a life that we are enjoying. We should be building uh, posterity for generations and generations to come. That is the reality. And anybody that tells you that's not, send them to me so I can explain to them that is what we ought to be doing. All right. Through my pursuit of wholeness, I have found gratification in God through his love, forgiveness, and restoration. And if you have not experienced the love of God, listen, y'all, his love comes with no strings attached and it holds no grudges. I love his memory because it said that once we repent about something, he cast it into the sea. That's, um, um, Micah 7, 18 and 19. Can you imagine all of the things that we've done? He casts it into the sea. Now look at how big the sea is. Now there are people that will try to dive in that sea and find things from your past and bring up things for your past. And a matter of fact, there's times you will dive in that sea, find things in your past and try to bring those things up. But the thing about the love of God is he loves you enough to forgive you for those things. And even when you try to bring them back to him, he's not trying to hear that. He wants to hear those things that are connected to your transformation and your purpose. That's the love of God. That is, the, and I want you to know if you're out there and you're struggling with the concept of God loving you because you're measuring God's love off of your last relationship, off of the situation you're having within your family, just your whole thought process of love, how you were raised to believe that love was, whether you were raised to believe that love was bought, whether you were raised to believe you had to do things in order to be loved, you need to understand that the concept of God's love came far beyond we, before we were created. He sent his son to die for our sins, to express his love to us before we were yet born. Before we were yet born, if we can grasp that concept, then we can begin to grasp the concept of there is nothing we can do to cause God not to love us. Now, that does not mean that when we're serving him, that we just live, you know, any type of way. But understand that he loves us even in our mistakes. 
He loves us. Even when we do it on purpose, he loves us. And if we can grasp the concept of God's love, then you will be more apt to come into his presence in a respectful manner, but you will also come into his presence understanding that he desires to embrace you for who you are, not who you've pretended to be for all these years, not for who others told you you were supposed to be. God loves you for you, and he desires to show you the depth of who you are. There's nothing like the love of God. Nothing like it, y'all. I'm trying to contain myself talking about the love of God because I do understand that so many people do not understand that he loves them. And I got to get you past that. I got to get you past the concept of, does God love me? Could he love me? Because yesterday I did this. 10 minutes ago, I did that. 10 years ago, I did this. The preacher told me, I'm going to hit this too. The preacher told me that I was damned to hell. That, that there was nothing I can do in order to experience the love of God. Maybe I want you to understand. If you don't believe me and you're in the area, I want you to stop by on Sunday. I want you to stop by if you're in Jersey, when we're in Jersey. I want you to stop by. I want you to give me a call. I want to have a conversation with you because I want you to experience, Handolo the power of God's love. I want you to experience the presence of God's love because it's, a, it's the love of God that can smash and destroy the yokes, the strongholds that you've carried around for years. It's that love that can penetrate that bitterness, that anger, that resentment, that fear, that apprehension that you have. It's that love that can go past, bypass all of that and come to you and tell you, you're awesome. You're amazing. You're mine. I created you in my likeness. It's that love. It's that love, y'all. It's that love. I'm telling you, it's nothing like the love of God. Oh, man, let's keep going. Today, as you begin to unwrap purpose, my hope is that you will come to the realization that God does not desire to keep hearing things he views as irrelevant to your personal growth and productivity. Y'all know the excuses, but God, I, God, God, I'm this and God, I'm that and God, I'm not this and God, I'm not that. God, I'm not like them and God, this. He's not trying to hear any of that. He desires, his desire for each of us is that we discover the paramount picture revealed through progressing beyond those former offenses. There's so much more to your life. There's so much more to your purpose, to your ministry, to your business, to you, to the essence of your creation. He just wants you to get beyond the thought process that he does not love you. All right. One of the greatest things I experienced in life came when I realized that God was not mad. I just talked about that. All right. Let's keep going. He longs to show you what love really, uh, he, he, he longed to show me and longs to show you as well what love is, what it was and what it is. That's why I talked about when he sent Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ to die upon the cross. That's what love was. Now he wants you to experience what it is as well, personally. And he longed for me to allow him to shine through me. Y'all, if you will allow the creator to show you his love, and then allow that to radiate through you, man, the impact that we can make on this world. Many of the things I've endured in life were wrapped in guilt, shame, embarrassment, and isolation. That, <laughs> Y'all, it was. It, it honestly was. I, I tell people all the time, I know people talk about that they have um, private, was it private battles, public promotion or something like that. Um, but I always say I had private promotions and public embarrassments. Always. Oh, it never fails. It never, 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 never fails. <laughs> it never, it never fell. I did. And the reason why God allowed that, why he allowed that was he was trying to break the God of people in me. Because people were my God. How they viewed me, how they thought about me. I talked about it a little bit, you know, further up in the teaching, but they became my God. 
but he pulled me from that. And as I said, many of the things I've endured in life were wrapped in guilt, shame, embarrassment, and isolation. However, when I tore past, and the more I continued to tear past the pain through unwrapping purpose, I discovered and am discovering the beauty of purpose. So I encourage you tonight, no matter how ugly or beat up the box may appear, or how ugly the wrapping paper may be, or how ugly the bow may appear to you, or how pretty it may be, but you're afraid to open it because you had an experience before when you opened a pretty box and it just was not what you wanted. I encourage you to begin to unwrap it. And the more that you unwrap it, the more purpose will be revealed. And the more that purpose is revealed, you'll reach in and no longer will it be hurt and anger and resentment. It'll be success. It'll be accomplishments. It'll be uh, in speech and engagements. It'll be contracts. It'll be everything that's connected to your purpose will be wrapped inside of it. But sometimes God just has to dig up some stuff in order to redig those wells that live deep inside of you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. We magnify your name. I thank you for tonight's teaching, God, because tonight's teaching is helping me to even unwrap even the more the purpose that's in my life. And as I unwrap, God, I know that those that are connected to me on a covenant level and those that are hearing this teaching, God, will begin to experience the unwrapping purpose, the unwrapping of purpose in the midst of their life. I pray for their strength. I pray for their encouragement. I pray for the fortitude inside of them, God, that they will fight past the wrapping, God, that they will deal with everything that they need that they need to deal with in order to experience your love, God, experience your presence, God, experience your purpose for their lives, God. And let's get back to that love, God. My prayer tonight, God, is that those that are hearing me that are struggling with your concept of love, I'm praying right now that you will take your arms and wrap them around them, God. Wrap your arms around them right now, God. Even as they go to sleep at night, God, or go to sleep tonight, God, I'm asking that you wrap your arms around them, Lord. Lord, those that don't experience peace in the midnight hour, God, that are struggling with their sleep, I'm praying now that you will hold and rock them in the middle of the night. Wrap your arms around them on tonight, God, and begin to, begin to minister peace unto them, God. I release peace in their heart, God, peace in their mind, God, peace in their spirit, God. God, that they will have a good night rest on tonight, God. And I pray that even in the midst of their resting, God, that you will give them good dreams. Those those that have been tortured and tormented in the nighttime, God, God, with, with dreams that are contrary to your will, purpose, and desire for their lives, they've been tormented with nightmares. Uh, God, right now, I release a uh, deprogramming of their mind and a reprogramming of their mind with dreams, God, connected to their purpose, God. Remind them of who they are. Remind them of who you called and created them to be. And most importantly, God, remind them of who you are, God, that you can get the glory you can be magnified, God. It all goes to you. We'll give you all the honor and all the praise. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, we pray and we say, Amen. Listen, again, I thank you for joining us on tonight. I pray that something was said that blesses you. If you would like to reach out to us, please email us at admin at the transformation center dot life. Center is spelled C-E-N-T-R-E. Also, to learn more about the ministry or the teaching was a blessing to you and you feel led to sow, I encourage you to visit www.thetransformationcenter.life. There it's going to give you the options that you need in order to sow. Listen, this is good ground. I encourage you to sow into good ground. Why? Because God will honor the seed that you have sown. And God will always, always, always provide seed for the sower. Listen, be encouraged, be strengthened. And as I always say, create a great day, walk in your purpose and execute your vision. Be blessed.